Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn here to show you how to install additional NVMe SSDs into your PC. I'm going to show you the basic installation process of how to put a drive in, how to set it up in Windows, how to make sure it's running at the right speed and test it properly. I'm also going to talk to you about the other things, like making sure you've bought the right drive in the first place, the generations of drive. This is a Gen 5 drive, for example, and how that can impact speeds and how it's important to use the right port on your motherboard. I'm going to show you how to work out which ports your motherboard has, where they're located and how to access them, and a lot of other different things. I'll leave timestamps down below so you can jump to the relevant points, but I'm going to get started now by showing you the basic installation process for adding additional drives in. In theory, the installation of an additional NVMe should be really straightforward. All you need to do is to turn off your system by either powering it off with the power button or through the Windows Start menu and unplugging the computer from the mains power supply. And then what you want to do is to remove the glass panel so you can easily access everything inside. Now for this video, I'm assuming that hopefully you've got an NVMe drive installed in the top slot here just below the CPU socket. If you haven't, then you could just put your new additional drive in there. But in order to install an additional one in this system, I need to first remove the graphics card. So you have to unscrew the GPU from the PCIe brackets. So you'll usually find a couple or three screws on the end that you'll need to remove, either from the outside or the inside of the case, depending on the build. Then we need to remove the power cables from the GPU. Just pinch the little clips on them and pull those out. You might have two or three cables to remove here or one of the 12 volt 2x6 power connectors. Just take those out and move them out of the way for now. Then to remove the graphics card, you'll find there's a little plastic clip on the motherboard. To show you this a bit more clearly, here's the motherboard outside the build, and you can see this black plastic clip here. We need to push this in to release the latch for the GPU. You might have a button on your motherboard as an alternative, but press that quick release button and you can then remove your graphics card from the system and get it out of the way. Now I'm using Samsung 9100 Pro for demonstration purposes here, and we're gonna install it down the bottom. You'll find there's a thermal shield down the bottom here, which is covering a bunch of the ports down here. If you're not sure whether you've got additional ports on your motherboard, I'll show you how to check that later on before you've even taken the system apart. So stick with me for that. We'll use the timestamps to jump to that point if necessary. This is removed with several screws and then taken out of the way. Notice on the other side that it has thermal pads with stickers covering those. That's important because we're going to need those in a second. Then remove your new drive from its box and then go about the installation process. If you're using a Gen 5 drive, you'll want to make sure you put it into a Gen 5 port. More on this in a little while, but it's important to check to make sure before you buy that you're buying the right NVMe for your system. These drives are easy to install though, they just slot into the port. You can see I've got three ports here, so you just pick the relevant one and slot it into place. You'll see that there's a little notch in the port itself and a cutout on the drive that you just have to line up when you go to slot this into place here. So a close up view of that and you'll see how it goes in. And then on the other end, it seats back down and there's a little latch that basically secures it into place, as you can see here. Sometimes you might need to use a little screw that was included with your motherboard to secure it instead. You want M2 screws to secure those down. Once that's done, we've just got to reverse the process by putting the heat shield back in place. Now, first of all, you want to remove the sticker from the thermal pad here so that that will then have good contact with the drive when we put it back in place. Obviously, if you're installing more than one drive here, you'll remove all the stickers from the thermal pad, but leave the sticker on the drive itself and then secure the thermal guard over the top and screw it back down again. It's important to use these because they keep the drives running cool and will stop them from overheating and then underperforming. Then we're just going to slot the graphics card back into place, pushing it gently into the port. Now, if you struggle with this because you've not done it before, I want to show you a quick thing that can cause issues with a different graphics card. So what you'll find is you have these silver pins on the end of the GPU. Those are basically meant to slot in between the motherboard and the case at the very edge and then help to hook into the PCIe brackets at the back there. From a different angle, you see what this looks like. So make sure those pins are lined up because I know people have problems with this and that it's slotting back into the same port you took it out of and then just push into place until it clicks into place. Then re-secure your graphics card by using those screws on the end to secure it to the PCIe bracket at the very edge there and make sure that's tightened up so it holds it nicely and then we've got to put the power cables back into place. Now with the 8 pin power connectors we need to make sure you've got the 6 and the 2 pin pinched together 
pushed fully into the port and make sure both those cables are fully inserted into the connectors. Otherwise, if one of them's loose or a little bit of it is loose, you'll find your GPU isn't performing as well. I mean, maybe if your system is problematic after this, it could be that. So just make sure it's not loose. Alternatively, if you're using a 12 volt 2x6 power connector and an NVIDIA GPU, you need to make sure that's pushed all the way in and fully seated so the colored pins aren't visible. And also make sure that you don't put extra tension on that cable when doing so. So try and resecure it so it's still nice and loose. Seen from a couple of angles, just so you can see how that works, you've got to make sure it's fully inserted nicely in there. Once that's done, you should then be able to boot back into Windows, and then you want to go about setting up the drive and making sure it's working properly. So what you might find is that the drive isn't visible in Explorer to start with. The way around this is to press the Start menu and search for Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions in the control panel. Alternatively, this is known as the disk management tool. You should find that it then initializes and you get this little pop-up to show you the drive is working. If you don't, then it could be a BIOS setting that you need to change in order to get it to work properly. But you should find a little black bit down here where it's basically recognized as a new drive. Right click and then click new simple volume. What we need to do is essentially to format the drive, give it a letter, give it a label, and then set it up. Basically go through this process to do this, to format it, and you'll have to wait a little while, but it shouldn't take long. It'll format, and then you should find it then pops up in Explorer and then can be used and obviously recognized and is available for storage purposes. At this point, I'd recommend testing it. So if you download Crystal Dismart, you can then go through this process, select the drive and select the same settings that I have. Make sure you've picked the right drive letter for this, put it in NVMe SSD mode, and then click to start the process of testing it. This is useful because it will make sure your drive's running at the right speed. You want to check and make sure that it is, if it isn't, it could be that you've installed it on the wrong slot on your motherboard, and I'll talk about that in a second, or that the BIOS settings aren't right, or there's some other factor that's influencing this, which could be holding it back. If you've got a Gen 4 drive, you should find it runs somewhere around this speed, 7,000 or 7,500 megabytes per second read and write speeds approximately, and that's the sort of goal we're looking for. So running this test can be helpful to check this sort of thing. I'll leave links to this software in the description as well as the other ones are recommending in here. But essentially what we're doing is just checking to make sure these drives are working and then you can use this to work out why not if it's not giving you the right speeds as what it should be. If you've got a Gen 5 drive in your system, as I have with the Samsung drive, and you've installed it in the right slot, and it's a Gen 5 port, you should find that you're running at somewhere around 14,000 megabytes per second, so you can see what a difference it can make with getting the right drive, and also faster drives, how much difference that will make to the speed. It really depends on your system, and I'll show you how to check that in a second. But this test is obviously free to run, and it's worth doing just to make sure everything's performing properly and working as it should be. Before the installation process that I've shown you, hopefully you've given some thought to what drive you need and where it'll install on your motherboard. If you're not quite sure what drives you have in your system or what ports are available, then it's worth checking and using Hardware Info 64, which is a free bit of software that I'll link to in the description. Install that and run it, and run it in full mode, and then you'll be able to have a look at your system specs and find out other things. Now this is useful in a number of different ways for testing and working out what's in your system. It will show you, for example, what drives you already have installed in the system, if any. But also it will give you the name of your motherboard model. So you can see here what the motherboard model is. And we can use this in a beneficial way to quickly find out how many ports we have on the motherboard. So you can search for your motherboard, in this case, the 870 or a Stealth Ice. And you will be able to find, sometimes by scrolling down and just having a look here, how many ports you've got. So you can see here, for example, it says it's got four M2 slots, two of them are Gen 5 and two of them are Gen 4 slots. And they're underneath these specific ones. So the top port here and then some underneath here. Sometimes you'll be lucky enough to find a specific diagram that shows you what it looks like underneath. So you get an idea of what happens when you remove the heat shields and where those drives are and which ports you can then use to fill up and which ones to pay attention to. Because this is the important point is you obviously want to buy a drive that fits your system. There's no point in buying a drive that's PCIe Gen 5 
that's in this Gen 5 one, if your motherboard doesn't have those ports on it, if you've only got Gen 4 ports or Gen 3 ports on your motherboard, then there's no point in having a Gen 5 drive in there because it will only run at the maximum speed, which would be Gen 4 or Gen 3. So if you bought a Gen 5 drive, spent a lot of money on it, and then put it in a Gen 4 slot, you'd find it would only run at 7,000 megabytes per second or somewhere around there. So it's worth checking your motherboard website to make sure you know where the drive ports are and which one's which and where you can install the new drive you bought to make the most out of it and make sure it's running properly, which obviously you can do with the Crystal Dismart tests as I've shown. As I mentioned earlier, populating multiple ports can also lead to other issues with your GPU, potentially with reducing the number of lanes that the graphics card has. As I said, I've got a more in-depth video on this that I'll link to in the description. But you can also check to make sure your drives have the right number of lanes. So what you're looking for is X4, generally speaking. So if we go into the drive section on here and then NVMe and then pick one, we'll look at this crucial drive. I'm using crucial in this system. But what you'll see is that it's PCIe Gen 4, which is what I expect it to be, and it has four lanes. So X4 means it has four lanes. If you see that your drive from your stress test with the crystal disk mark shows underperforming as in it's only got half the amount of speed it might be that it only has half the amount of link width so it might have only x2 so it might only have two lanes which is why it's running at that amount of speed so it's worth checking the bifurcation tables on your motherboard which you'll have to refer to the manual and the tech specs of the motherboard specifically it could be that it could be it's running at the wrong version because you've got it in the wrong port it could be if you populate multiple ports on the board that that leads to some of them having less lanes, which in turn can lead to lower speeds. And these are all things worth checking. Again, check out my full video on this, linked in the description down below. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.